Hey guys, it's Darlin Adam here from Welcome to Travel. We have been inundated with questions since our video went viral. Uh, things backpackers never say. Things never said by backpackers. Definitely one of those, yeah. yeah. Um, we've had six million views now, I think. Yeah, or seven. Seven. Loads. Loads. Uh, and we said we would answer your travel questions, so. Yeah, we, uh, we'd like to do this maybe once a fortnight. Uh, if you guys would like to ask us more questions, we'd love to answer them. Um, right now, we don't have a proper name. We're going to call it Ask Travel. I'm yeah. sure you can think of a better name than that. <laughs> if you've got a better name for it, uh, write it in the comments and we'll name it. I've got the questions up here. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to pick a few and just fire them at each other. I'm going to pick one for you, Daryl. Yeah, yeah Daryl can have one first. So here we are. Here's a question from M Mitali Scarlet Sharma. I'm not helping myself there with picking the names. Right. Airbnbs versus hostels. Which one would be better for long-term travel and why? All right. Well, Airbnbs are like a very 21st century thing. It wasn't the thing like three, four, five years ago when no. we first started going traveling. Um, I like Airbnbs. I personally um, use them. For long-term travel, it just depends who you're traveling with. If you're traveling by yourself, I would opt to go with hostels, otherwise you're not going to meet anybody. If you're like just in Airbnbs, it really shuts you off from meeting new people. And it, with travel, it's not just about the places which you go, it's also the people you meet. I do, if you are traveling in a couple, it is quite nice when you go traveling every now and then to get in like an Airbnb, just so you have your own space. But I personally have traveled by myself in groups with, a couple, uh, with my partner and I always tend to choose to go with like hostels. So personally. hostels majority and then a treat in an Airbnb every Yeah, moment. yeah, I would do that. Cool. All right, I'm gonna ask you one. All right, let's have a little look here. Um, <laughs> right, stitch up. Um, here's one uh, by Albert Marquez Garcia. What is the best period of year to go travel to Australia? And any must do, uh, any must see and do there? how to move from one place to another once in the country and how to minimize the cost of traveling uh, as Australia is quite expensive. Cool, so right. I give Daryl one question and he gives me four and they're, <laughs> all, the, they're all pretty big questions. Yeah, that's so a big question. Really. When was the best time to go to Australia? Well, luckily Australia is that big that it has different seasons around the whole country so you can come here anytime. Um, down south, Melbourne, Sydney, the summer goes from, well, officially December to February, but it's warm from October till end of March, April time. And then up north, uh, above Brisbane in Queensland and the Northern Territory and the top of WA, it's pretty much always warm, but their seasons go in reverse. So when it's summer down south, it's wet season up north, um, so cyclone season. And then when it's winter um, down the bottom, down south, it's actually dry season up north. So you can pretty much always head somewhere and it's going to be warm and pleasant. Now, best place to, things to do. Yeah. That's a, quite a big one as well. Yeah. Um, but I'll go for it quickly. So most people start down in the bottom, down in Melbourne. It makes sense. It's the best place to start because then you can move up from there. Uh, Melbourne, you've got cool city. You've got great ocean road to the west. It's beautiful road hugging the coastline. Then you can take you up through the outback to Uluru, to the desert, um, learn about Aboriginal culture. And you can carry on all the way up north to the tropics, up to Darwin, where you've got, yeah, you've got crocodiles, you've got incredible national parks. So that's kind of one section that I've quickly done there. Or you could go east from Melbourne, go to Sydney, the first city, um, and yeah, see all the beaches, obviously see those big touristy things, um, the bridge, opera house. Then you can keep going up the east coast. And uh, if you're talking about things to do, you've got surfing, you've got beautiful beach towns, You've got sailing, you've got possible skydiving, snorkeling, diving, rainforest trips, absolutely everything. Um, now, how to get around the country. Buses make it very easy along that main backpacker trail of the East Coast. You can get hop on, hop off buses, um, where, which really minimizes your cost. You can pay like three, four hundred dollars to get from uh, Melbourne all the way up to Cairns, and you can have flexibility of time. You can travel over three months and stop in all these little towns. But also if you wanted to travel a big distance and go maybe Melbourne to Cairns or Sydney to Darwin, then a bus is gonna be a lot more expensive and take forever. So you can fly there and there's cheap flights all the time so you can get 
flight from Sydney to Cairns or Melbourne to Darwin for $150. Yeah. Hopefully that answers yeah, so four true. questions yeah. in one. That's good. Right, I'm, gonna I'm think, impressed. <laughs> oh, I just need a drink if that's right. Um, <laughs> cool, so I'm going to find one for Daryl. Let's have a look. We've been asked so many questions, by the way, so we had to really like cherry pick, and we didn't want to like choose them before. So here we go. It's a cool way to travel and make money at the same time, and that question is from Evo Popov. Evo I hope I'm Popov. saying these names right. Yeah. Don't, don't be offended if I'm not. I'm sorry. A cool way well, which to one travel it? and make money at the same time. A cool way to travel and make money at the same time. Well, a good thing about Australia, we've got the working holiday visa, so. This is a great country uh, to work and travel. Um, I suppose I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this in like two ways. So it's really about how you format your trip and how you um, can travel. So when most people come over to Australia, they're kind of stuck in between two minds, whether to go traveling or whether to uh, start work straight away. I personally would um, get the bucket list items out of the way, do what you want, came over to Australia to do first. So whether that's going to be traveling up the East Coast or whether you want to go to the Outback or the West Coast, the first month or two, I would personally go traveling because you never know what's going to happen back home. You may, things may change. And then from there, you still have like 10 months left of your like working visa. So for the next three to four months, I would then focus on working, whether that be uh, in hospitality or whether you're going to be doing like your farm work where you can get on a second year visa I've actually found a question for you earlier and I'm gonna ask you about that um, uh, and then from there you will be building up that travel fund again so you can go traveling to different destinations in Australia so whether you travel the East Coast first you then save some more money and then you can go and do the Outback now a cool way now being cool is very subjective. Um, I think a lot of people get it twisted and go, I want to be an Instagrammer and go make so much money and yeah, be like an influencer. Now, not everyone can do that. A cool way, like if you are a builder back home or if you've got a trade back home, you can still do that work here over in Australia and make some money. Like that's what I would personally do. Stay, stick to your trade. Make some money in Australia because the pay here is so good. So like, what you're basically so good. saying is it's hard to travel and work as you travel. Just do, yeah. a, do a chunk of traveling, do a chunk of work, do a chunk of travel. And that makes it a lot easier to not get caught in the... Yeah, method. so do like two months of travel, three months of work, two months of travel, three months of work. Cool. Roughly, yeah. Um, cool. Good question, Evo. Yeah. Was it a good answer? Yeah, better question. <laughs> good answer, good answer. All right, um, all right, this will be last one. Uh, all right, okay, cool. Uh, this is answer, uh, This is question by Lilsa Villamiona. He's not helping himself out with the name. No, Should have gone hard. with Evo, pop off. <laughs> Should have gone with Evo. Uh, if I come to stay for a while slash work in Australia, what's the best way to go about it? Yeah. So what's the best way to go about finding work and coming to Australia? So uh, like well, the best way to go about it would be to um, work out your flight first. Um, if we're talking about kind of a like, little order of way of doing it, um, yeah, work out where you're flying into. So we always recommend flying into Melbourne at the bottom of the country. Um, look at the visa. Um, so some people would be a working holiday visa. So it's a 417, um, or some people will be a 462, and that just basically depends what country you're from. Now the 417 visa allows you to work for six months with any employer, and it also allows you to extend your visa for a second year by doing 88 days of rural work. So it's often known as farm work. If you do the 462 visa, so this is a visa um, a lot of countries get, um, specifically American uh, working holidays come here. So it's known as the work and holiday visa. Um, you can actually do uh, three months hospitality or tourism work in Northern Australia, so at the top of the country, um, to extend your visa. You can also do the farm work, but you can also do hospitality or tourism work, which is pretty cool, and I wish I had had that option. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's two different visas, so that's basically the first things you need to look at. Budget for a flight, what visa, visa you need to apply for, apply for the visa, and then start planning from there. Plan kind of 
your first week in the country and then go from there whether you're going to travel and whether you're going to work. Yeah, what we'll do as well is I'll put a link on the video uh, of how to like find your visa as well. Um, it's like homeaffairs.gov.au, but yeah. I'll put a link underneath as well. Easy. Cool, right. so we're going to, we've decided to, there's some big questions then. Sorry we didn't get through everyone's, but we got like 180 uh, questions. Um, and some of them were like four in one, like the one I answered earlier, but we have got a few quick fire ones here. So we're going to fire some quick fire questions at each other. Right. Daryl, can over 60s crowd, can the over 60s crowd enjoy hostels too? Yes. Remember Colin from Margaret River? Do you remember Colin from Margaret River? Got the guitar out, always singing Beatles. Great blow. Colin, get the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, they can. As long as you have yeah. the right mindset and attitude to meet people um, and know that it won't be full of, uh, it will be full of younger people, but you're fine with that and you want to make friends and have new experiences, then yeah, then that's cool. Okay, after Australia, what place is the easiest to travel to? New Zealand, that's easy. That's easy, that's so easy. Three hour flight, cool. Next question, yeah. oh, it's me. Two, two safety tips for a solo female backpacker. Ah, someone thinks you're female, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> never mind, we get that a lot, but I'm gonna give him it anyway. All right, uh, hopefully for obvious reasons, we would not be able to answer this. I'm trying to grow a beard, but it's not working. So what I've actually done is reached out to um, several female travel bloggers and we're writing, a blo uh, we're writing a blog in conjunction with them about safety tips of how to go traveling, not just in Australia, but in general as well. So we should have that up in the next few weeks. So Natasha's rules, that was your question. Yeah. You're not just getting your question answered on here, you're actually getting a blog written as well. That's pretty good service, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. Right, give me uh, a question. Uh, have you ever got super excited about a hostel that has an oven? A hostel that has an oven? I've been really excited when I've got to a hostel and it has an oven. Daryl actually doesn't know what an oven is. What's an oven? Um, so yes, yes I have. Who is that? Cat Rebecca, that's a great question. Yeah, really excited. Yeah. And I've cooked in it after that, yeah. Um, here's one for you, Daryl. Um, are you single? Who asked that? Megan, I Megan Irene, are you single? Sorry to disappoint all the, um, all the people on the, uh, who commented. Neither of us are single. He, sorry. We, we've got... He's saying all the people that commented, one person asked that, so yeah. Oh, thousands, thousands of fan mail. But after this video, there's a good chance I will <laughs> be single. Um, uh, uh, right, okay. Never. Yeah, all right. Um, is it pronounced ho hostel or hostel? because you both say it differently. So, who's wrong? That's by Lolly Elvis Cortez. Cortez? Yeah. Cool, so it's, <laughs> it's hostel in every country in the world apart from Australia, where apparently it said hostel. Now, I'm sticking to my roots in the video, I say hostel. Um, we are both technically Australian now, but Daryl harnessed his inner Australian on the video and called it hostel. As about probably 3,000 people commented um, <laughs> and every one of our friends noticed. Basically their only question about our video was, why can't Daryl say hostel no, anymore? I say hostel normally, but I get nervous in front of camera. Yeah. And so then I went, oh, hostel. Hostel. Right. Now, the, that's basically yeah. all our questions that we were able to answer, because we want to keep it pretty short and snappy for you. Um, but there was one question that came up a lot, and that is, what is going to be our next video and where is our next video going to be? Uh, what's it going to be about and you'll find out when we have our next funny video up in May. May. So probably mid to the end of May we'll have our next video up and then another one in June, another one in July. So yeah, there's probably going to be about one a month. I say, I say the next, like what we've written so far is funnier. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd say it's better. Yeah. Um, if you want to comment names for this and we're going to post this out every two weeks. We're going to call it Ask Travel for now and we'll see how we go. with love to answer more questions. Thank you very much guys and Cheers. we'll see you next time. All right, thank you. Cheers.